If you ever feel out of control around food, you're not alone, and you're in the right place to learn practical, no-nonsense information about why you binge and how to stop. Binge eating does not mean that something is wrong with you. It's a natural but primitive brain response that you can correct. If you're ready for change, sign up for the Brain Over Binge self-paced online course for less than $20 per month. And if you feel you need personalized support, we also offer one-on-one coaching and group coaching. To learn more, go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the show. This is the Brain Over Binge podcast, where you learn a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. I'm Katherine Hansen, your host, and I'm very excited to have another guest on the show with me today. Here today is Lydia, the lifestyle coach. Hi, Lydia. Hey, guys. It's so great to have you here today. I've known Lydia for a few years now, and we've collaborated, done other interviews. We also did an online workshop earlier this year, along with Amy Johnson, who was also a guest in a recent episode. And it's so amazing to be connected with so many like-minded women and men as well who are out there sharing their own story and spreading a message of empowerment and helping others just end this binge eating habit. And Lydia, you are out there spreading your message in a big way. And if you currently receive my newsletter every month, you've probably seen one of Lydia's amazing videos, which are so unique and inspiring. So Lydia, why don't we start there with you telling the audience about your videos and about some of the other work that you do, and also about some of your own personal history, which is what actually prompted you to get into this work in the first place. Yeah, awesome. And thank you so much, Catherine, for having me on. And I mean, for those of us who know our background a little bit, they they might know this, but like you saved me, Catherine, like your your book, Brain Over Binge was just like a huge piece of my own journey. So it's so fun to, to be on here with you today and happy to share, you know, a little bit of background in my story. So I was a, I worked with people in like the health industry and weight loss and had a very successful business there. And it was just so much of my identity for years. So it was just, you know, stronger, faster, better, thinner, leaner. And it's just like, I saw no problem with that. That's just being healthy, right? That's just what people do when they have control or when they are good people, or I had all this morality like in it. And what started happening is even when I was so, so restrictive and particular in my food and everything was clean and healthy, and I was supposed to be the shining example for all these people that I was leading in their health. I started doing this really weird thing with food. First, I started thinking about it all the time. I was just obsessed about it and it would distract me from other things and I couldn't wait to eat. And then as soon as I ate, I was so sad it was over. I was watching the clock. And then one day I just ate and I couldn't stop. I just ate and ate and it was just totally out of control, which I'm a controlled person. So that wasn't like me at all to just be crazy around food, eating stuff that I would never eat normally in huge quantities. And it freaked me out so much that I just was more rededicated. You know, I dieted harder, I worked out harder and then it happened again. And then it just started happening over and over until my whole life was really just trying to make up for this insanity around food. And I didn't know why it was happening. I had no idea. I never thought of it as an eating disorder because I thought I was just crazy. Like I'm like, oh, I'm insane. I'm going insane. I have to fix this. I nobody can know. And, you know, I sort of like came out about it and, you know, started trying to get some help. And I tried some traditional therapy methods and I tried all sorts of other things. And then it just became a full-time job on top of my eating disorder to have to like try to track everything and to try to fix this. And it didn't seem to ever get better. And I had studied mindfulness and changing the thought behaviors and patterns and all those sorts of things. And it had served me in so many other places in life. And then when I found your book, Brain Over Binge, it was the first time that I realized I could use those principles with my food stuff. Like, oh wait, this is just a habit and I can break it. And I was done. I was absolutely done. I have not been bulimic or a binge eater since, but that was just me and my story. And I had so many people coming to me asking, okay, like, how do I fix this? I feel the same way about food. So there was over 8,000 people in our organization and so many of them are struggling with this food stuff. And 
So I started just applying these principles to them in sort of like the ways that I had gotten over it and sort of my style, what I call calling out the chatter. You guys can see videos about that, but sort of like that method. And we refined it more and more and people were just getting better quickly. And everyone was just like ending their food stuff. And now this is just, this is my career now. Now I just help people to end their overeating, binge eating, bulimia, compulsive eating, emotional eating, food addiction, whatever you want to call it. But like, that is it now because we just perfected it. And I really believe that anybody who's ready to be done can be done. So that's where I'm at now. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I can really relate as well to being in that place of feeling so out of control around food and not knowing what's going on. And it's so inspiring to hear that you found your way out. And not only did you find your way out, you've then reached out to help others and you've helped so many other women and men overcome this for good. The topic of our interview today is getting out of the diet cycle. Lydia is here to share some insights about ending the restriction and the deprivation of diets and moving toward a healthier relationship with food. Both Lydia and I, along with many others, believe that dieting is a primary cause of eating disorders. And this idea, I think, if Lydia, you might agree, is that it's becoming more mainstream. It's becoming common knowledge that dieting causes problems. The mental and physical effects of it are so damaging. And when you're in that deprived state, the reaction of your brain is to try to protect you. And both you and I experience that where you just feel like you have to eat as much as you can, as soon as you can, as fast as you can. And it's really unsettling. So, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably experience this with binging and you probably want to overcome it. You're ready to overcome it. But you may also feel trapped by this diet cycle. Even though you know you want to quit binging, you may feel like you want to keep restricting to lose weight or to change your body in some way. But dieting makes it basically impossible to stop the binge eating habit. And today, Lydia is going to help you put an end to that dieting cycle, which is a major part of putting an end to binge eating. So Lydia, first, can you explain some of the harmful effects that dieting has on us? Because I know some people tend to think, well, dieting isn't such a big deal. I can just do it and also quit binging. But both you and I know that it is a big deal and it's something that needs to stop. So can you just talk about some of the harmful effects that dieting can have on us? Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, I just want to like reach out with empathy to those of you listening, because I know it can be such a scary thing to even think of giving up dieting. Like there are some of you who might want to just turn this off right now because it's like, no, if that's what it takes, it's just too scary. So I just want to encourage you just like try it on. You don't have to do anything. Just listen and, you know, just hear these ideas because with dieting and the dangers that come from that, I mean, when I really decided to end dieting for good, I just sat on my couch and I cried and I cried and I felt like I was gaining 50 pounds while just sitting there. (laughs) Like it was so scary, but there is a freedom on the other side of dieting that is unlike anything. And it is so incredible. And I guarantee you like more happiness without it in your life. So, you know, just a few of the harmful causes of dieting is I mean, first of all, it causes eating disorders. Like, you know, I say it's the number one cause of eating disorders is restrictive dieting. You might have started restrictive dieting for different reasons, but either way, like that, those are the buttons that get pushed. It's a natural reaction to restriction to binge. So one, getting you crazy around food is a harmful effect. The other thing is just, even if your concern is weight loss, even if your concern is your size, dieting is one of the best ways long-term to gain an insane amount of weight. I have seen women gain 100 pounds by dieting because with the restriction, we end up eating so much worse and so much crazier, like when we're falling off the wagon, that it's actually a huge factor in weight gain. It's the dieting that actually does that. And as we diet, each time we restrict, we have another and a greater chance of actually pushing up our set point. So You might just have a point where you can remember maybe like before you were dieting, when you were a teenager or whatever, where your weight just was kind of your weight. It didn't go up. It didn't go down. You just were who you were. And then you started dieting. You lost some weight and then you gained it back plus some. And then you lost some weight. You gained it back plus some. So over time, it's going up. But also your set point, like if you've had a point where you've just given up dieting for a while, you might find that that set point that your body sort of floats back to is higher than it used to be. So if you have a fear of weight gain, I want you guys to understand that one 
effect of dieting is actually pushing up your set point where that number gets higher and higher the more years you diet. So, I mean, just being able to say, okay, even if your motivation is, you know, being the size that you want to or a smaller size, giving up dieting is actually one of the best things you can do because it's so damaging to just your metabolism and your set point and all of that. So there's all sorts of reasons. One of the beautiful things is just like the mental freedom that comes from not having to diet anymore. Um, but yeah, those are just a few. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. It's dieting makes it so much worse. And once you can see that, it puts you in a position that you do feel ready to give it up and to start to move toward peace with food. Now, some women and men that I work with say that they are eating enough when we're just considering calories, but they still have a very rigid and restrictive mindset and a lot of food fears and food rules. And I know that you work with people to help them give those type of rigid food rules up. Can you talk about the difference between a physical deprivation where you literally are not getting enough food and more of a mental deprivation when you're having a lot of restrictive food rules? Yeah, yeah, really really great question. So, physical deprivation is like, okay, you're just like literally physically not eating enough calories for your body to feel safe. So it's pushing all of those, like you call them in your book, Catherine, survival instincts, right? Of like, okay, well, now we feel like eating a ton because we're, we're starving. We're not getting enough calories. So like you said, it's a very confusing thing when you do feel like you're getting enough calories and you still feel so compulsive or crazy around food. And that's when the mental deprivation comes in. So I'll give you guys a real life example that you can feel mental deprivation right now. So let's play a game. So I want you to just listen to what I'm saying right now. Okay. After midnight tonight, there is no more ice cream. It's gone. There's not going to be any more in the stores. There isn't going to be any more on the planet. Like ice cream is over after midnight tonight. Now, what is the one thing that you want more than anything else in the world right now? ice cream. <laughs> exactly. It's like, maybe you weren't thinking about ice cream a minute ago, but then all of a sudden, when you know that it's going away, then it's the deprivation. It's that I'm not going to have this later, or it's not okay to have this. And deprivation actually drives cravings. Anything you tell yourself that you cannot have, for instance, an entire any diet <laughs> actually drives up the cravings for all the things you can't have. It drives up the physical and the mental cravings. So how many times has it been a binge where it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to start on my diet tomorrow. I'm never going to do this again. This is my last binge. Notice all the deprivation there. This is my last binge. It's not okay. I'm not going to have it tomorrow. And then you binge harder and more than you ever have before because you're never going to have it again, right? So it's the mental deprivation that actually makes things so much worse. So being able to get rid of that mental deprivation is feeling like it's not okay to have, you know, foods and that you're not going to have it after a certain point. So I actually have seen people gain, I worked with a woman who gained 80 pounds over a year or so because of the way she was eating, because she knew she had to get the weight off someday. It was just that at some point in the future, she would have to diet, drove her to eat so crazy every single day and gain all of this weight. So that's that mental deprivation. Yeah, Lydia, that makes a lot of sense. When you say these type of foods are off limits, it makes you want to eat more of them. It makes you eat more of them. And it's hard to convince people that when you do allow them, you give yourself the freedom to choose to have them. It doesn't mean you'll choose to have them every day. But when you have that freedom to choose, you actually end up eating less of those foods over time. Do you find that to be the case? Absolutely. And it's such a beautiful thing because the people who are getting free actually build trust with themselves. Because they have this idea of, oh, well, if I let myself eat whatever I wanted, I would just eat chocolate and bread all day until I pass it out. And for them to really go to this allowing place and then to be like, oh, I had one cookie and then I had a salad and then I had dinner. And for them to really build that trust with themselves is a really freeing thing. Yeah, definitely. And of course, we're not talking about people who have certain health conditions that need to avoid certain foods. Certainly, that's a reality for some people, but there are still ways you can do that without triggering that deprivation mindset. 
Yeah. And one thing that, that is important is like, just because there are certain foods that you don't eat because of, you know, allergies or, you know, health issues, whatever it is, you can still go into that without a deprivation mindset. And I've worked with women who were binging on foods they were allergic to, which was horrible for their health, but it was because of the deprivation. So once we work through that deprivation, I mean, they weren't binging at all anymore, but also they could set aside those foods, but without that restriction and finding that place is incredibly, incredibly exciting. Yeah, definitely. The deprivation is partially a physical thing, but the mental piece of it is very big as well. So it's great that you help people through that. And another thing I'm hoping you can share today is some inspiration, like what you just shared about your clients having success. And I want the listeners to understand that freedom from this diet cycle is possible. It seems to me that people who are constantly cycling between dieting and binging really have a hard time believing that there's another way. So can you share some of what you've seen as far as people getting out of this cycle and stopping not only the binging, but the dieting as well? Yeah, really, really great question. So one woman who I'm thinking of, you know, we've worked with hundreds of women now, but you know, one just uh, graduated a little while ago and her story has been coming to my mind. She was a binge eater for 30 years and she was like, after we started working together in three weeks, she was completely done with binge eating, just done. And so there was a huge missing piece for her that I helped her to work through. And it has everything to do with what we're talking about today, Catherine. So one thing I want you guys to remember is that deprivation chatter is binge chatter. And chatter is the word that, that I use for, I think it's synonymous with Catherine's you know, neurological junk, right? It's the thing that's telling you to binge. But I want you to understand the thing that's telling you to binge and the thing that's telling you to restrict is the same thing. It's not like, oh, the real me wants to make up for this binge and restrict and like this crazy me wants to just binge. No, that chatter, as I call it, wants you to just stay in the cycle. And if the cycle is restrict and binge, restrict and binge, it's actually going to encourage you to restrict as well. And that was a big missing piece for her. And she was an incredibly intelligent woman, smart, great job, accomplished, read all the stuff, knew all my videos, read Brain Over Binge. Like she knew intellectually these principles. And the big thing for her was finding the chatter around the deprivation. Because when she tried to stop the binging, she had never been successful. And in three weeks, I helped her to work through and end and know exactly how to step out of the cycle of the restriction because restriction chatter is binge chatter. And what we're doing is we're poking holes at each phase of the cycle. And for her, that was a phase of the cycle that she had never poked holes in. And as soon as she did, she was absolutely done. And nothing can make her go back to binging again because she realizes where she was getting sucked back into the cycle. So just so you guys understand the power of being able to step out of the restriction part of it and the deprivation part of it, a lot of times when you end the urges to binge, you don't binge. Or when you end the urges to restrict, then you don't binge because a lot of times the binging is just an effect of the restriction because it's a cycle. So just for you guys to understand the power of being able to end the restriction piece. Yeah, that's really great advice and inspirational to see that someone can step out of both the binging cycle and the restricting cycle. I mean, it's all part of the same cycle as you're explaining. It's all that habit loop and it's just going to keep repeating over and over and to be able to break it at any point, whether it's an urge to binge or an urge to restrict, that you don't have to respond to either one of those urges. So I love that. The last thing I'd like for you to share is some insight around body image. Even if a woman or man stops binging and stops dieting, if they continue to hate their body and their weight, then they're still at risk for someday returning to those harmful dieting behaviors, which can start that whole diet binge cycle all over again. So how do you coach people around body image so that they're not swayed to turn back to dieting? Yeah, I just love that you're bringing that up. And I think one important thing to remember is to be done with binge eating, you don't have to love your body. That's one thing that I always make clear to my clients. Like, yeah, we're going to work through the body image piece because I mean, you're going to have so much joy not hating your body and you know, that's going to be awesome. But the main reason that we look at body image is just because issues with body image lead us back to restrictive dieting. If you just hated your body, but you never dieted restrictively, 
then okay, go and hate your body and that's fine, but we can still help you to end binge eating. So understand that like how you feel about your body, it's not like you have to fix all of your issues there before you can be done with binge eating. You just have to have enough acceptance to not go back into restrictive dieting because that's the thing that really leads us back into binge eating. So one way that I coach people through this is that we just connect the dots. Like, okay, so this is the chatter that's coming up about how you feel about your body. And then we just break down all those things. I teach them how to step out of the cycle there. And then it doesn't lead to the restriction. And then it doesn't lead to the binge eating. So like I was talking about, we're looking at all phases of the cycle. So if there's a phase of the cycle that sucks them back into that pattern because of how they're feeling about their body, well, then we just look at all of that sort of chatter or neurological junk that comes up about, you know, their, their body image. Um, one really great thing that you guys can just start to do to sort of improve body image is something that I actually learned from Isabel Fox and Duke. She's an amazing, you know, body acceptance gal, and she shares something that is been one of the only studied and proven things to help people to adjust how they feel about their bodies. And it's really simple. It's something that I actually did myself to just help with my own body image journey is to just look at images of people your size or larger. That's it. You can Google plus size models, or you can just, you know, find some great body positive Instagram account because we're so exposed to the sorts of images that aren't even real people. They're lit and makeup and digitally remastered and photoshopped. Like we're not even seeing images of real people anymore. And so to just see people our size and larger, just the exposure helps us to sort of have more of a well-rounded, like, you know, Rolodex of images in our brain so that we can just start kind of adjusting how we feel about ourselves. So it's practices like that. I mean, there's so much great stuff about body positivity out there. But one thing that I specifically work with my clients is, is breaking down the sort of patterns and habits of thought that keep us in the cycle of hating our bodies. And the understanding that how we feel about our bodies has very little to do with our physical bodies and almost everything to do with our mental thoughts about our bodies, our mental feelings about it. So for instance, I feel better about my body today than I ever have before, probably just, you know, doing the work that I do and working through this stuff. And you know what? I'm heavier today than I was when I was bulimic. I was much thinner then, but I hated my body so much more. So it really has to do with sort of your mental state. One thing I wanted to preempt and bring up, which is a really common thing that comes up for people is this chatter of, oh no, if I accepted any bigger bodies, if I thought my body right now was okay, then I would just never change. And I just wouldn't care. And I would gain a hundred pounds. And like, okay, so observe that see that going on, if that's going on for you and just realize shame about your body actually drives up the restriction and the binging more. It's actually that acceptance and the lack of shame, body positivity and acceptance actually helps us to eat better than we have and to act more calmly around food because we're not constantly trying to manipulate our bodies with either depriving food or in reaction to that binging. So it really is an important piece for a lot of reasons. That's great advice. And I love the word acceptance. I mean, I agree with you that you do not have to love your body or everything about your body to recover. But you just can't continue trying to fight your natural weight or your natural shape by doing harmful things to yourself. You and I both know that there are so many more worthwhile things to do with your life and with your time. Lydia, this has been amazing. I truly appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been a wonderful conversation just talking about body image and getting out of that diet cycle. And I know the listeners have received so much useful information as well as inspiration that's going to help them get out of that dieting restrictive mindset and also help them put an end to the binge eating. And before we end the show, Lydia, I'd love for you to tell us more about how the listeners can connect with you and learn more about the work that you do. Yes. So what they can do is they can go to LydiaLifestyle.com. There are a few really great resources there. So I have a free ebook that you guys can get. And I also, we have a really amazing Facebook group and it's a, a community. It's a closed group. And I'm in there. I do videos for you guys just for the group, you know, every Wednesday, like it's a really fun place. You know, one of the very most powerful resources that we have 
is what I do is we offer 45 minute free sessions. And this is just a service that we want to do to help everyone who is ready and who wants to, to get that first step toward recovery. And this may be the best you know hour that you have ever spent on your freedom. We provide this because we highly qualify everyone who we invite into the program. And so you're either just going to get that first step. And if you do qualify for the program, then you also might get an invite if we know that we can help you as well. So if you go to LydiaLifestyle.com, um, if there are spots on the calendar, you know, snag one, they go very, very quickly. So if you don't see one, you can get on the waiting list and check back. But, you know, this is not for everyone. The sessions are really for those who you are ready to end this. Like this is a huge priority in your life to really just be done and to be free. And the time is now for you. And if that's the case, we would love to chat with you and to help you with that first step and perhaps to just be completely done with this as well. Thanks so much, Lydia. And I also want to include a link in the show notes to your YouTube channel as well, which I mentioned earlier in the show. And there I know you put out free videos for anyone and they're so helpful and unique and entertaining as well. So what is your YouTube channel? Yes. So if you guys go to LydiaVideo.com, that'll take you right to my YouTube channel. There are new videos every Monday. And I mean, I think there are like hundreds of videos there now. I don't know. I just keep going. But there's a lot of stuff there. And they're fun and they're funny. And they're just, you know, hopefully a great tool on your journey. So yeah, you can go there and you can subscribe. So you get a notification when, you know, new stuff comes out and just, you know, great stuff there. would love to have you guys part of the community. Awesome. And as usual, I'll have a link to my free ebook as well in the show notes. That's all for today's show. Again, I want to thank Lydia so much for being here. Thank you so much, Lydia. Thank you so much for having me on. And it's been so lovely always to connect. And just for you guys listening, just know that there absolutely is hope and you can just be done with this. And to you, the listener, thank you so much for being here as well and for being committed to overcoming this binge eating habit. I hope you'll join me again next time. And as always, I want to encourage you and remind you that you have the power to change your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey. Need more help? You can find all of our current and upcoming options for support at brainoverbinge.com.